Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a Discord tool in C Sharp. So on GitHub, you've probably seen tons of different Discord tools. Some are made with Python, C Sharp, even Batch. But today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to code one yourself in C Sharp. Let's get right into it. So first thing you're gonna need is our beloved Visual Studio. You can use another IDE, but me personally, Visual Studio is what I use for basically everything, so yeah so once you have visual studio open you're going to want to create a new project and you're going to see a bunch of templates here and since we're coding it in c sharp you can just like set the filter to c sharp and see all of this stuff and we're just going to be using the console app but not this regular one we're going to be using the dotnet console app which is right here so it should say dotnet framework after so just double click on it call it whatever i'm going to call it pc tool by the way this video is for educational purposes only really all i'm going to be showing you today is some c sharp basics and also some ways that we can interact with discord in c sharp so this is our main function meaning this is where the code starts getting executed these are all the libraries that we're including and we actually want to add system.net.http because we're going to be sending web requests and you need this library so first we're going to start off with the title because if you just run this uh, we see that it's just like a command prompt window and that's it so we're gonna give it a nice name we're gonna say console.title is equal to dc right oh. and also we're gonna add a console.read key and what this is going to do is basically pause before it exits so we can see what's going on read key just waits for any key input and then we want to display our banner because who makes a Discord tool without a banner. So we're actually gonna put that in a separate function. We're gonna be using quite a bit of functions today just to keep things neat, so also good practice. So this is a function right here. This is the main function. And we're gonna be creating different functions for different tasks that we want done. So for the banner, we're just gonna call it static void banner. So as you know, if you watched my batch tutorial where I get banners and where most people do is um, this website. Here, just look up this then click on this link and over here you can just type anything usually your tool name and then you choose your font you can also change your width and height meets dc tool oh bro i'm actually a sng dc tool because discord tool yeah there we go so we can just choose from any of these fonts the popular ones are here ansi figla fonts so you've definitely seen these before i'm just gonna use 3d ascii i like how this looks so copy it and then all we have to do is create a right line statement so console.right line and now we don't just paste it for the bracket you want to put a at symbol then press enter twice and then paste it semicolon of course so we're just going to call the function Let's see what it looks like boom dc tool dc tool and below the dc tool i just want to add like a little and then like at ebull man so that's our banner and now we're going to make the menu so so the menu usually just lists all the options and we're just going to make a function for that too so static void menu and here you can put in like whatever options you want so i'm just going to write a few down but really when it comes to like discord or whatever you're making a tool for there is like so many things that you can put down here like i some of these multi-tools have like 60 different options. So really just put down whatever you want to do. So these three are pretty simple. Oh, it's also good to add a exit one. So number four, exit. And we might actually want to create a new line before this. So there's a little bit of space between the menu and the banner. So now we need to call menu after banner. Like even now, our main function is looking a lot more clean. Because if we just threw all this code right in here, it would be pretty messy. But over here, it's organized way better. Okay, we got DC tool, boom, 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 all our options looking pretty nice. If there was a way to make the window a bit smaller, that would be good. Or actually, I can just move over this a little. And the positioning looks fine, honestly. So now we need to accept user input and process it. So um, over here, we're going to, there's many ways we can do this. We can actually even use read key because we're only reading one character. Or we can do read line, but then they're going to have to press like two and then enter. So it's up to personal preference. But me personally, I kind of want to use read key. You don't need to press enter. It's a lot more quick. Console key info. Give it a name. I'm just going to put like input. And we're going to put it into a variable. So it's, it's a character. And now we actually need to process it. So we can use any sort of conditional statement. We can use if else statements. We can use a switch case. We can use whatever. But in my opinion, for something like this, a switch case would be better. If you don't know the syntax for that, you're going to learn now. 
so switch and then the variable name and then we have all our cases so all our, our cases are one two three four so case one and then we're gonna call a function or do something so for example we can like exit the program if it was like four because that's exit if it's one we're gonna call our function so now we're gonna make a function for sending the webhook message static async void since we're gonna be using a function that needs to be async because we're gonna be awaiting it webhook message Bam, 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 bam. So the console is gonna be pretty packed. So what we're gonna do is clear the screen. So console.clear. And then we're going to input stuff. So instead of write line, we're gonna use console.write because we don't want it to create a new line. We want the input to be at the same line as our output webhook URL. And the user is just gonna input it like right in front of it. It's gonna look nicer. And then we wanna save it to a variable. So string webhook is going to be equal to console.readline because now we're reading the whole line we can just copy paste this and we're going to do the same thing for the message call this message and there we go we have our variables now this is where things may seem a bit confusing but basically we need to put it into a json payload and then create an object for http client and send it in the json format so there's a few ways we can do this the simplest is probably just creating a JSON variable and using JSON syntax. So that's gonna look something like this. And then our variable for message, and we can just press tab here. And basically we're just saying content is equal to our message. And then we have to create our object. So using HTTP client, yes, yeah, it's already, so it's just a variable name and we're creating an object for our HTTP client. We have to create a content variable new string content there we go it already autofills it obviously we need to make sure that it's json so and from here we just send the request so the object name is client so client dot post async visual studio basically just wrote this whole thing for me i just like was pressing tab we're gonna figure out how to use colors on the banner so there is a few ways just like in the badge video you can change the color of the whole console you can change each individual line you can use color codes kind of forgot how to use color codes like for this but there's a few other ways so we're just gonna do console dot foreground color and over here we just choose like green or whatever color so let's see what they have uh, let's just do like dark cyan and let's see what that looks like so everything is dark cyan looks all right another thing that we can do is just reset the color right after so we just have to do over here we just put console dot reset color there we go and now just the banner should be cyan so something like this and you can change the color for the rest of these but now let's actually try to do like separate colors for each line so to do that instead of outputting you know the whole thing like this we're gonna have to have a right line statement for each separate line of the banner so i'm gonna do that a few moments later <laughs> All right, so we organized it like this, and what we could do is just change the color individually. So just have this command uh, after each line. But honestly, it's not even giving us that many options. Like if we look here, we have red, green, cyan, white, yellow. Like if we want a nice fade, if we want something like this, oof. If you want to learn how to do this in a batch file, watch my video on it. But yeah, if we want to do something like this, oh yeah, we need something. Uh, need to do something a little different okay so i just ended up making kind of a fade not as sexy as the batch multi-tool but this is what it looks like it's just like a cyan to blue to whatever like i could make this look better but honestly this isn't even that bad to be honest in c sharp you don't have as many options for the color it's less versatile than like python or batch okay so now let's actually call the variable so if the case is one we're gonna call the variable here we're just gonna add break and let's try this so boom dc tool send webhook message do 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 exit we're gonna send the webhook message then we have to paste our webhook url i just created a random ass server and for the webhook url you just want to go into the settings of your channel integrations you can just create a new webhook spidey bot copy it another thing that you can do is actually uh, modify the request and give yourself an icon and change the name of the webhook when it sends the message but that's topic for another video so yeah that's the url right here then message we're just gonna say 
testing and it exits and let's see if it sent the message so it didn't uh, we're just gonna await it like normally we're using the message variable but we're supposed to be using the json variable don't know how i missed that but yeah, sometimes little mistakes like just not noticing stuff is what's wrong with your code so you just looking over your code sometimes is what you need to do okay and also what we should do is put this in a loop so it doesn't just exit when like you finish doing a thing it kind of comes back and you can do other options too so we just want to make a while true loop that's basically a loop that's just going to run forever indefinitely and we're just going to paste all of this in here and also whenever it comes back we're going to clear the screen so console.clear so when we break over here all it's going to do is go back to the loop and we start with the banner and everything so here the title we could actually we should move outside let's give this a shot and there you go we get sent the message and we can exit so i'm not really going to fill out the rest of the options because Honestly, I don't really want to figure them out, but the point is that you can do a lot of stuff and you can actually do a lot of stuff with someone's um, T O K E N. There's a few cool things that you can do. If you're interested in that, check the link in the description because in my community, I have a Discord C Sharp tutorial on that using the API. You know, it's pretty cool. Check it out if you're interested. Oh, yeah. Also, if you want to build your project, you want to go here, build solution. Then go to your repository folder, go into your folder of the project and in bin, boom, you have your exe. So you can give it an icon, give it whatever. And now when you run this, you have your own exe and you can use it. Testing and bam. And it's just going to run like a normal executable and you can just here. Let's make sure the loop works again. There we go. And we can exit. And now this is your Discord tool. Cool. So that is it for today's video. If you're interested in my private community where I have courses, I have a Discord server, I have exclusive videos. Click on the link in the description where I basically just explain everything that's in the community and you can get a small look on the inside. So if you like this tutorial, let me know in the comments and let me know if you want me to make more tutorials similar to this. I was going to make this video in C++, but honestly, C++ is not the right language for this type of thing. C Sharp, Python, those are definitely the way better options. Like and sub, drop a comment about what you want me to make a video on next, and I'll see you next time. Peace.